up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Subaru Forester, courtesy of Younger Motor Cars in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today for one, because it is extremely hard to find. I've been wanting to review this one for quite a while. I finally found one, a pre-owned one, with only 3,000 miles on it. But nonetheless, I found it. But anyways, not only that, you also have great resale value really with any Subaru as well. And also the best all-wheel drive system in existence. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 forester first one being the base starting at 26,395 premium for $29,395 sport for $30,965 Wilderness for $34,020 limited, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $33,075. And lastly, the Touring going for $36,495. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Forester is actually going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM. That power is going to be sent to all four wheels through super legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system power is going to be sent to the ground through a CVT with paddle shifters if you were to go with the sport from level and up at least zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately eight seconds flat with MPG numbers then coming in at 26 in the city 33 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Forester I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes because there's a couple different setups when it comes to the drive modes for example on the steering wheel there is an S and an I kind of on the right hand side that's the si drive that essentially puts you in either a sport or intelligent drive mode adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response essentially but then there is also your x mode kind of drive modes and that's the circular dial located directly behind the shifter and that's going to give you normal snow and dirt and then deep snow and mud drive modes and that's going to adjust the all-wheel drive system engagement giving you the best possible traction in order to get you out of any of those situations so if the legendary all-wheel drive system wasn't enough you also have have that X mode so that is pretty darn cool but anyways how we got all of that out of the way let's now go ahead and find a straightaway let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here first because we do have them not all trim levels will get them but to put it in that full manual shift mode simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and then that is going to tell you what simulated gear you were in up on the digital portion of the gauges and i put it that way because it is a continuously variable transmission after all it's not technically gears that i'm going to be shifting through but anyways let's go ahead and find this straight away and let's put the paddle shifters here to the test and acceleration so let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us and let's see how quickly we can get our new super forester here up to speed all right and here we go huh. all right paddle shifters aren't bad now keep in mind again the simulated shifting but if you wanted to have some fun with the shifting it actually imitates an automatic transmission quite well it really does feel like you're kind of shifting through gears if there were any so i do like the paddle shifters for that reason of course you can also use them for engine braking so if you're going down a mountain like i'm about to hit here if you're going down a mountain in the snow and you didn't want to hit the brakes and risk sliding off the road you can always simply downshift a little bit do a little bit of engine braking so you're less likely to slide off the road so i do like them for that as well as far as acceleration goes the way i would describe the acceleration here in the forester is it's zippy or peppy at lower speeds so when you hit the gas it instantly throws you forward which i like i like those fun little zippy cars it's like you're driving a little subcompact around city streets kind of thing that's what the acceleration feels like but once you really get into it like merging onto the highway it is a little bit slow it's zero to 60 in eight seconds so it's not the quickest thing in the world but it'll definitely get the job done you're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway so I don't mind it. I like the zippiness of it. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So braking setup is actually going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with, believe it or not. So for that base trim level, you get 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. And then for the premium trim level and up, it's actually bumped up to 12.4 inch 
ventilated front disc. So a little bit bigger of a braking setup if you were to go with the premium trim level and up. But then in the back, it's gonna be the same coming in an 11.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as the 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at a pretty respectable 125 feet. There's nothing wrong with that. Since there's nobody behind us, let me just hit the brakes definitely on the firmer side of things i love the braking feel on this thing so i was expecting a much softer braking feel because typically in suvs that is what you get a very spongy squishy soft braking feel which i i'm not a fan of i don't think anyone's a fan of that so i love the firm braking feel in the forester you typically don't get that again in suvs but as far as that 125 foot number it's pretty average for this segment so some suvs come in in the 130s if you're going with the luxury brands it'll be in the one teen so 125 feet that's pretty much on par for the course but the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent double wishbone type rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine actually in my short test drive here today so absolutely no issues with that definitely definitely absorbing the road imperfections quite nicely so i have no issues there as far as steering feel goes it does tend to lean a little bit on the looser side of things but that is to be expected with an suv like the forester it's not a sports car after all so it's definitely something i wouldn't mind for this what this vehicle is i'll put it that way as far as wind noise goes we're going 30 miles per hour right now there isn't a whole lot of wind or cabin noise of course at this low speed but back there i was getting a little bit of engine noise so you do get a little bit of that but it's not anything that would bother me personally so you shouldn't have any issues either for that reason but then taking a look at visibility looking out my rear view mirror there i can see perfectly fine out the back so rear visibility is definitely not an issue either but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Subaru Forester. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Subaru Forester. So definitely looking good out in the wilderness here. Let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the 2023 Forester is built and assembled in Japan. JDM, as it should be. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED steering responsive headlights with LED daytime running lights. So the steering responsive, that that is an optional feature on a lot of luxury manufacturers, so I really want to emphasize that. Essentially what that is, is when you're going around a bend at night, the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend, so you're less likely to hit a pedestrian, a cyclist, or a bear, or whatever the case. So that is definitely a very nice safety feature to have. And again, it's very rarely found on most new vehicles these days. So I love that Subaru does that. So really wanted to emphasize that. Automatic feature coming with this headlight headlights as well meaning when it starts to get dark at night headlights will turn on automatically for you there but also automatic high beams i love that feature so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim your high beams back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams so definitely something i use all the time as i'm driving to work at night typically in the morning so big fan of that and down below you guys could probably see them Fog lights do come standard on the premium and the limited. And by the way, we do have the limited trim level with us here today. And LED fog lights then for the sport, touring, and wilderness. And the wilderness trim is actually going to give you a little bit different of a design to those LED fog lights as well. But overall, definitely looks like a Forester up front. I don't mind the front end. Definitely looks good in my personal opinion. But that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Forester. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, raised roof rails are going to come standard on the premium trim level and up. Rear privacy glass also coming standard on the premium trim level and up. I wanted to emphasize that because that is kind of odd in my opinion. The base trim level actually does not get rear privacy glass, so keep that in mind. Black window surrounds is going to come on the base, premium, sport, and wilderness trims. Chrome window surrounds then coming on the limited and touring. Again, what you guys are looking at right now. As far as the side mirrors, go matte black side mirrors are going to come with the base body colored side mirrors with the premium sport and limited trim levels and then a black hexagonal texture with the wilderness and then satin chrome side mirrors for the touring so they are going to differ pretty substantially depending upon the trim level so that is kind of interesting but with integrated turn signals for the sport trim level and up then there will be heated side mirrors for the premium trim level and up. then last thing i wanted to mention on the side here is taking a look at the wheel setup 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the base trim level 17 inch aluminum alloys for the premium and the wilderness and then 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with the sport limited and torn but 
that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so we now see you all around to the back of the Forester here, all the way to the top, body color shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. When it comes to those taillights, they are LED taillights. That does come standard, so added illumination at night, that isn't always the case. C-shaped design, definitely looks good back there. Just below it, all the exhaust finish is gonna differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with. So if you do go with the sport trim level and up though, you will get a single stainless steel tip. Otherwise, there's gonna be no fancy exhaust tip to this thing so anyways that is what you guys are looking at so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since you are around to the back of the Forester, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a power lift gate if you were to go with the limited or touring trim levels. Otherwise, it is going to be a manual lift gate. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 28.9 cubic feet for that base trim level, a little bit less for the premium trim level and up coming in at 26.9 cubic feet. With those rear seats down then, that bumps it up to 74.2 cubic feet for the base trim, but all other trims are gonna come in at 69.1 cubic feet. Still plenty of space for this thing though. Removable cargo tray is gonna come on the sport trim level and up. However, all trim levels are going to get cargo lighting back there, grocery bag hooks as well, tie down anchors, and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will actually find some in-floor storage down there as well. Not a ton, but still little is better than nothing. And there is a cargo cover available along with a 12 volt power outlet back there too. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 39.4 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. So plenty of space for me. Rear center armrest with cup holders coming with the premium trim level and up dual rear USB charging ports for the sport trim level and up and you can actually get heated rear seats on the Forester only if you go with the touring trim level but I do love the fact that they are available here but then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the base power adjustable driver seat for the premium trim level and up heated front seats for the premium trim level and up as well soft text upholstery is going to come on the wilderness trim level but leather seating what we have today is going to come on the limited and touring trim levels so overall though as far as seat comfort goes it was plenty fine i certainly didn't have any issues there so i could see no issues going on a long road trip with the forester here then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up and it will be heated only if you go with the touring trim level. So I will say that there is an available option for the limited where you can get a heated steering wheel as well. We actually do have that option. So that is pretty cool. But then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially, all of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Lock, unlock that button to pop the rear tailgate there. But I will say the Subaru logo is going to be the unlock button for anybody not familiar with Subaru is already. They always do that, which is pretty cool. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the premium trim level and up so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right and there is a small digital display front and center which is pretty darn cool to control what is on that digital display there are some uh, steering wheel controls kind of found behind the steering wheel on the left hand side there giving you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature there's a digital speedometer if you wanted to set it on that of course the si drive can be displayed up there as well along with what gear you're in so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges then but then make your way to overall interior quality there is a panoramic moonroof that does come standard on the premium trim level and up it is a one piece and it almost kind of goes into the rear seats but it is plenty large so definitely lets in a ton of light i will say that led interior lighting coming standard for all trim levels across the board i love that overhead sunglass holder yet again all trim levels are going to get that automatic climate control does come standard but i will say if you go with the wilderness trim level and up you will find dual zone climate control so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there just in front of the shifter is a little bit of rubberized storage just behind the shifter you have an electromechanical parking brake couple cup holders and 
and within the center armrest, a little bit of decent amount of space in there with this 12 volt power outlet as well. I love the texturized finishes. I will say that found just above the passenger side glove box as well as on the doors. I think that's a nice little added touch, but what really gets me is the tech in this one. And it's kind of in a good way, kind of a throwback way. But first, let me start by saying there's two tech screens. There's kind of like this upper screen where you can control what is on that upper screen by using the steering wheel mount controls again on the left hand side. So gives you things like outside temperature, what day of the week it is, the date. So very useful information. And again, all you need to do is just hit the info button on the left hand side of the steering wheel. It gives you safety features. There's uh, elevation actually up there as well. It gives you weather forecast, a compass, a lot of cool stuff actually just looking through it now that is pretty cool I like that anyways but then there's the other tech screen and first let me start by mentioning yes a CD player does come standard so that's one of the cool throwback things I guess you don't find CD players like at all all now so Subaru still got it on the Forester so gotta love it 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the base premium and sport trim levels 8 inch color touchscreen display then coming with the wilderness trim level and up Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way Android Auto Apple CarPlay still standard either way so that's fine factory navigation system coming with the touring trim level only and overall was super easy to use of course you can check out your radio information up there as well so when it comes to the sound systems there's three of them four speed Speakers is going to come on the base trim level six speakers coming on the premium sport wilderness and limited and then there is a nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 576 watts coming on the touring optional for the limited we do have that option so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> Bass is ridiculous, guys. That was that was an excellent sound system, actually, for the Forest. Their clarity was great. Bass is ridiculous. That was brilliant. Wonderful sound system with the Forester, without a doubt. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Forester in reverse, you will, of course, find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you were to go with that wilderness trim level, you're also going to get a 180 degree front view monitor as well, because that is the off road trim level after all. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so, first, let me start by mentioning the best part IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. There's a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear trial door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, Subaru EyeSight. And so that is going to include pre-collision braking system, pre-collision throttle management, lane departure and sway warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering, and there's some other features for some other trim levels as well. I wanted to mention so like the blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert coming with the sport trim level and up and if you were to go with the wilderness or touring you will also get reverse automatic braking and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2023 forester best all-wheel drive system built for powering through the snow i remember a video i watched on youtube a while ago where they literally tested all the all-wheel drive suvs in existence to see how far up a hill of snow they would get and I believe it was the Subaru Forester that got the furthest. So Subaru originally designed their all-wheel drive system built for rally racing through dirt and snow. And that is why it is still the very best all-wheel drive system in existence. So you're going to need that here in Western Maryland because it does snow every now and then. Great resale value as well. You got great safety, as I just mentioned. Plenty of cargo space. As far as room for improvement goes, it is a bit slow. But having said that, it's not going to bother me because it does have that little bit of peppy or zippiness to the acceleration, which I absolutely love. And the other thing is the interior quality is kind of on the basic side of things. Now, I will say with the trim level that we have today, it's not horrible, but on the lower trim levels, it is definitely on the basic side. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the 2023 Forester in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. I'm going to open up the panoramic moonroof. Bye.